Good afternoon or good morning, um, depending on where you are in, in the country. Um, this is Sarah Hollister from Achieving the Dream. Um, and I'm going to take about one minute to go over technology before we get started with our April Leader College conference call. Um, we do this uh, just every, every month, just so that everyone is familiar with the technology of GoToWebinar. Um, each one of you should see the control panel on your screen right now. Um, and if you happen not to see it, it's, it's um, probably minimized. And you can pull it back out by going to the Grab tab, uh, which hides and shows the control panel. Uh, there are several um, items within the control panel that allow us to make this a very interactive experience. Um, you can see the attendee list, so you can see which of your colleagues are on the call. Um, you can also raise your hand if you have a question. Um, and then, of course, there's also the question pane, where you can put a question in that way. Um, all of the panes can be expanded or minimized by clicking on the plus or minus button that are at the top left of each pane. So with that in mind, um, I just want to say really quickly, if you do have uh, the problem of being cut off from the call or not being able to um, activate one of your um, control panels, uh, try logging off and then logging back on. And um, the same goes for the audio. If you're having trouble with your audio, with either hearing, or if um, you'd like to ask a question and you're having trouble with that, go ahead and hang up and call back on and make sure to enter your audio pin. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Carol Lincoln, our senior VP, to go ahead and start the webinar. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate you getting us started uh, on a good uh, Good foot. Thank you so much. Um, welcome again to everybody. I know some of you are still signing on. We're watching the numbers uh, bump up slowly as more people come on board. I'm not sure if anybody's on from Lone Star yet or not, but before we got started, I did just want to express Achieving the Dream's uh, understanding and, and uh, thoughts about um, the recent events that were on their campus. I think most of you probably read the headlines where there was a there was an incident where there was some uh, stabbing that happened at Lone Star Community College, and a number of people were sent to the hospital. We're really saddened to hear that kind of uh, news and recognize that this is one of the things that colleges are dealing with in the modern day and age. There's always these security concerns. And so we, um, we wanted to express our concern and uh, support for Lone Star today. With that, let me uh, just move on and get us started with today's program. The staff that are supporting this webinar today include Sarah, myself, and Kennard. Kennard's our um, fellow who's going to be making sure that the technology works as best we can make it work. And we um, also have some other staff listening in. But the bulk of the conversation today is not going to be by Achieving the Dream staff. It's going to be by our guest. So let's take a quick look at the agenda. We will cover the um, um, Sarah, actually, I'm stepping on your toes here. I know this is something you were going to talk about. Would you like to just go through this this slide? You're doing a fabulous job, Carol, but uh, <laughs> I can quickly tell you that we'll be doing the regular agenda with Achieving the Dream Business, uh, Leading by Example, and then we have a great presentation planned for you all um, about Gear Up, which is a um, national nonprofit that works with community colleges. And uh, you can see who we have uh, geared up to talk with you here on the slide. Um, the one thing I did want to note is that we have made this webinar an hour um, because we felt that we had so much great content to go over and wanted to be sure that we had also plenty of time for questions and comments. So go ahead, Carol. OK, thanks, Sarah. So for Achieving the Dream Business, a couple of things we wanted to just quickly touch on. You should be aware that the annual reflection guidelines, which is the term that we're using for annual reports, um, has, been, uh, has been released. There's uh, some dates on the screen that suggest deadlines that you need to be paying attention to. There's going to um, be a principal's assessment due on April 18th, so that's just around the corner. And uh, we wanted to make sure that you were aware that 
a webinar which was conducted earlier to enable different colleges to ask questions and so forth about how to complete that reflection report has been taped and it will be available for you to review if you need to. It will be up and posted at least by April 12th. NYSOD, uh, as many of you will remember, is often the place where leader college presidents have been invited to present and tell some of the stories that you have about some of your successes. This year, NYSOD really wanted to build a stronger partnership with Achieving the Dream, so they reached out to us and offered some special rates for ATD colleges to become more deeply engaged with the NYSOD conference. So again on your screen, you can see some of the details of this special partnership. You should have also have received an email from Rachel Singer from our office talking about these special offers. But essentially, you get a break on the cost of registrations. You get an opportunity to have a, some exhibit space. Um, membership fees are reduced. And you really get some preferential treatment with their pre-conferences and other events that they have. So we encourage you to take a look at that, dig up the memo from Rachel Singer if you need to, and uh, consider whether or not this is something that would be a good deal for your institution. We do want to also remind you that at NYSOD, we're going to have four of our leader colleges that are participating in the Press for Completion initiative will be doing a, a pre-conference workshop about faculty and staff engagement. So if you have folks going to that NYSOD conference, we suggest that you recommend that they look up that pre-conference workshop by ATD leader colleges. We've also got a link on our home page that says more about this if you want to check into it. The second item of our ATD business is to give shout outs to those colleges that have been doing some really remarkable things lately. And this is a remarkable collection of colleges today. The Association of Community Colleges is going to be making some awards at their convention in a couple of weeks. And they recently released the list of colleges that are in each of the several categories for which they are going to make special awards. So we wanted to send out a early congratulations to those ATD colleges that have been selected for the final competition. You see them on the screen, Community College of Allegheny, Cuyahoga, Phillips, South Texas, Cuyahoga, and Lone Star have all risen to the finalist stage of these special awards. And we've got our fingers crossed that um, all of you will get additional recognition at the convention. We're so pleased that you were able to rise to this uh, special status with AACC. With that, um, I think we'll move on to our program. I'm rushing a bit this morning or this afternoon, depending on your time zone, because there's a lot to be shared today by our special guest, Lisette Nieves. Um, he Yoon Slater, Bill Kasanovich, and Talisa Rogers are all with us today. And they're going to be talking about this exciting partnership that has developed between Year Up, which is a community-based organization, and several community colleges in the country, including our own Northern Virginia Community College. This is a really um, exciting opportunity for community colleges to open up higher education to a very deserving sector of students who may not have otherwise thought that college was in their future. And Europe is going to talk about how they recruit and prepare young people to go into a college setting and to be successful at that level. So for the first part of the presentation, Lisette and Hyun are going to talk about the national program and the national model, which uh, is in an expansion phase right now. And then Bill is going to talk a bit about his experience at NOVA, uh, what they're working on. And then finally, 
our own Talisha Rogers. And I say our own because she is a year up student that's been working at Achieving the Dream. We have had two year up students so far, and we just love working with these folks. Talisha is going to talk a bit about what she's experiencing as a, a recruit of year up and as a person working in um, the ATD setting. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, the, the uh, presenters, and we'll have an opportunity, we hope, to also give them um, a question and answer period at the end. So I will turn it over to Lisette and He Yoon and um, ask you to begin their program. Great. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Lisette Nieves, and if I'm ever confusing at any point, Please let me know. We'll make sure that there's plenty of time for answer, question and answer. And I'm excited to be here to talk about the Europe Professional Training Corps. And so I'd like to just start going into a little bit about the history of Europe. Europe is an organization, a nonprofit organization nationally, that started over 12 years ago. And what it's done is meant to support young adults who are not in school and not working getting connected to a marketable skill, college credit, and then having them engaged in work while also consuming education. That is our mission. We're so excited about doing that mission. And what we realized is that this mission came from a founder, Gerald Tertavian, who over 20 years ago was a big brother to David Heredia and the Rutgers Housing Development in New York. And while Gerald was a banker, he realized that supporting David as a big brother, he was also very engaged in being a co-support with David's family, who loved him greatly, but maybe didn't have the navigational skills to help him get through school the way that he could have. Luckily, uh, David uh, benefited from both Gerald's support and his mom's support, graduated from high school, and then went on to graduate from college and is an animator running his own business right now out of California. We're so proud of him. But what Gerald realized, as what many of us who, who care deeply about young adults, is that we lose a lot of young children along the way. And we lose them because they may not have had opportunity or access to opportunity. And so those are very tight circles. When we think about that, Europe is really focused on responding or responding to the challenges of the 6.7 million young adults that we have nationally that are not in school and not working between the ages of 16 and 24. We know that there's over $3 million of open job vacancies based on a report that was done by Monitor. And we look at it and we say, how do we get what we perceive and understand as untapped talent of this close to 6.5 million young adults to the 3.5 million jobs that are available? And so we realize that opportunity in this country today means that we need a broker. And so I'd like to go to the next slide and talking about Europe's mission. In order for us to close the opportunity divide, we provide urban young adults with skills, experience, and support that will empower them to reach their potential through professional careers in higher education. So Europe, in its traditional core model, is a model for 10 years that has been focused focused on being an independent nonprofit and having relationships with different schools around the country at nine of the sites around the country. But Europe realized, well, over 30% of the young adults that have been coming to Europe in our standalone program were young adults who had tried community college and were not successful. And as we know, many who were not successful, it wasn't necessarily because of cognitive issues necessarily. There might have been challenges in balancing work. Some of them had been stuck with through what I call the developmental education mill um, because of a variety of different reasons. We're not college ready. Um, but the majority had a lot to do with the need to support their families while also trying to consume higher ed. So what are the basic tenets of the Europe program? Well, one is that we believe strong in high expectations that have to be linked with high support. And what does that mean? That there are mentors, tutors, staff advisors, as well as an educational stipend for each young adult that participates in this program full-time in the traditional core program. And what that means is 35 hours a week during a full-time week at a nonprofit site. We provide them with training and education skills and technical education, 
professional skills training. We call it Attitude, Behavior, and Communication, the ABCs. And we have matriculation agreements with over 20 different colleges across the country to provide them with college credit. The second six months, we provide them with experience in what is considered a professional environment. Most of that is through the corporate sector. And in order to host it, in turn, what they do is provide a donation to year up, typically out of their operations resources, which is very different than the way most people would think our organization would run. And that underwrites the cost and support and education of having that young person throughout the year. We also provide enormous guidance and coaching. And that comes through every young adult signs a contract with Europe that even if they are a second late, that they will understand that their stipend will be impacted by that. And um, there is, every week, there's enormous amounts of support in providing feedback. Um, we look at feedback as a gift in providing advice and support on growth, as well as championing where there have been incredible successes. Let's keep going. When we think about the young adults um, that we support, we also want to think a little bit about what are the outcomes for our graduates. And I think that's a piece that's significant for Europe. We do not want to train young adults for training's sake. Um, our young people, particularly the ones that we are supporting and working with, are young people who have been let down many times before. They are young adults who barely graduated from high school. They are young adults, quite a few of them, maybe a third, have general education diplomas. Um, they are located in the top 25 cities in this country. That's where the, the concentration of the disconnected young adults are. Uh, they're typically young people of color, and the majority of them fall below the poverty line. And so we wanted to build a sense of programming where everyone was clear, both our corporate stakeholders as well as our internal staff, and most importantly, our young adults, of what was going to be the return on investment in having a year-up program. So what can we say about it and the success with our graduates? Because that's ultimately what matters most, is that 85% of our alum, alums are employed or in school full time. Think about that. With a few thousand that we have across the country within four months of graduation. Um, we look at average earning rates of around $15 per hour, which is around $30,000 per year. And 90% of the Europe interns that we place in the corporate and professional sector meet or exceed, or exceed corporate partner expectations based on a survey that is done electronically every six weeks over six months to each of our corporate partners. Now let's go forward. When we think about Europe, we think about how is Europe going to grow and how has it grown. So way back, in 2001, it was the pioneering 22 young adults that started in Boston. And what we did was we expanded to two campuses um, when we were in a partnership with two different colleges when we went to 2002 and actually used another site out of Cambridge as well as one in downtown Boston. And that's how we were able to have 52 young adults. As we move forward, we went to Washington, D.C. We tested a pilot in Rhode Island, which is doing still well, not even a pilot anymore. And I had the honor of launching Year Up New York, which is probably one of the largest sites in the network right now. What we realized as we thought through, as we think about growth, is that we've had over 1,900 students that have been served per year by Year Up. And we currently have actively, not passively, actively engaged 250 different corporate partners right now. And for us, at the end of the day, 1900 a year, think about the 6.7 million. It's really not enough opportunity. There are so many of us that care deeply about this as an issue that we want to think through what is the next phase in thinking about year up and its growth. So let's go to the next slide. When we think about year up, we think about three things, and this is important. As a board, we pulled this together, and we had real decisions made across the organization around three areas of foci, I guess that's one way to say it. 
So one would be that to grow and strengthen the poor, which is the traditional nonprofit model that's an independent standalone that has relationship with community college and their full-time students with year up, full-time participants. And then the second six months, they're full-time on an internship. So we know that we've been successful with that model. That model is what I call the bread and butter for us in the sense that it's not just about financial, but it's about why we, what, who we are. It is where we've come from. But we know that at the end of the day, 1900 a year isn't enough. So we want to grow it, but at a pace that makes sense, and we want to strengthen it. So we want to think about something larger. We thought about developing the million person model. Now we love to say million because um, for us, we believe so much in, in aspiration, as do almost every educator here. <laughs> and we, we realize by thinking about it in that way, what could be something scalable that will make a true difference in hundreds of thousands of young adults across this country. And then the third area that we'd like to spend attention on as a national organization is creating system change. At the end of the day, we know this level of disconnection is something that is not good for America. It's not. And it's in everybody's interest that these young adults become fully integrated into America, into the economy, into full-time education, into consuming and contributing in a great way to this great country. And so that will mean different types of system change. And for us, that has meant really working with different types of legislatures and others and, and thinking about supporting workforce and higher ed models that actually look at this issue and want it to change. So let's go to the next slide. So what does the million person model mean? Well, that means one example is what we call the professional training course. And what we've done is design an alternative program that can scale to serve the 100,000 students nationally that we'd like to. And one of the things that we like to do in this model, and a key piece of it, is leveraging existing infrastructure in higher ed, from faculty to student services to classroom space. And what that also allows us to do is really think about the reduction of cost for us in the standalone model, but also what we call the value added or the return on investment for higher ed partners and looking at Europe as being the broker to opportunity in the private sector primarily. And so what we know is that we know more about employers, I'm not being arrogant about that, when you have 250 partners across the country, what we realize is that partners trust us, they know that we are demand driven and preparing skills and we could not have kept our partners this long if we did not meet their needs. So we understand that business piece. And oh, we also know how to manage and support the interns that are on those sites. That makes a huge difference in thinking about that. And quite often, very rarely, is this function of brokering the opportunity to private sector, linking to workforce, internship management, that all done by one particular uh, part of a higher ed institution. And so we provide that as the value added. We see every one of our young adults that are in the professional training core as community college and college students first. We gear up as a critical wraparound support in the first year that makes it successful for them. We have launched the professional training core model in um, one of your absolute uh, incredible uh, colleagues and um, colleges that has done extremely well, which is Miami-Dade College, and we've also launched in Baltimore. We are about to launch in Philadelphia, and we're very excited about that, and have enormous uh, level of interest in Northern Virginia, which I'm so excited that you'll actually get to hear from Bill, who could talk a little bit about that, because he has a traditional Europe model, the core model within partnership right now, but how does he envision seeing the professional training core, this kind of hybrid community college model, in the future with him? So how do we go? Let's switch our next slide. How do we go into what we call a new market? And, and I'll say we're going to always use terms that are real hybrid between educational terms, business terms, nonprofit terms, because that really represents the makeup of the Europe staff. That's the Europe community. We are uh, bridge builders and brokers to many different um, sectors, and thus uh, we're proud of our hybrid language. But if it gets confusing, please stop me along the way. 
or ask questions about that. So the first thing we do whenever we go into a new market is we want to make sure there's a demonstrated need. Right? And what does that mean? And I'll go into that. We'll go into is there corporate partner demand? Is there an active supportive community? And are there strong academic partners? The next four slides go into each one directly. Next slide, please. So the first one is around looking at the disconnected young adults. That's, that for us is the number one anchor need. Right? If we know that there are over 6 million disconnected young adults in this country, and we know they're concentrated in the top 25 cities in this country, we also know that they are spread out in also less urban areas too, but these young adults have tried college for various reasons, dropped out, and we know that we want to make sure wherever we go that we see this population presence there. We want to follow the data on that. It's critical to have that. Let's keep going. The next slide. We want to think about our corporate partners. Who are they? These are the examples of corporate partners that we have around the country. We do not go into a market if we do not have corporate partners. A, it's critical to our sustainability. Our young adults have to be guaranteed an internship. I make sure that when I hire staff that they never have to look at a young adult in their eye and say, you know, we do not follow through on our commitment to you. Absolutely not. We have to follow through on that. We have to be fiscally responsible. And it's a key piece of our sustainability as well as opening and brokering opportunities for our young adults. So typically a corporate partner anchor is very important for us. Um, so examples in Philadelphia and in Miami, um, we're looking at both healthcare and technology as anchor institutions for that. Let's go to our next uh, slide. We look for active su uh, supportive community. What does that mean? We look at supporting a student pipeline creation. We look for startup funding, local board development, leadership selections. We think about active supportive community. It's so critical that other either nonprofit organizations or other infrastructure that in there is also willing to buy into and support your own. We do not go where we are not wanted. We love to be invited in. That is important for us. And what we do is we work with the local community to have this. Because we know at the end of the day we will have local hires running this. And that's critical. Right. The next slide, we think about academic partners, of which I am excited to be on this particular webinar because I couldn't think of a more um, exciting group to be speaking with today or have the honor to speak with today. Right now we're with Baltimore City Community College and they're pretty much significantly upfront about enormous challenges that they have gone through. Um, they were in receivership, they've um, had low graduation, excuse me, of persistence as well as graduation rates and they came to us because they were like, we have to think differently and we need someone to help us think differently and we want to work with you to help us think through a new pipeline of students to come to Baltimore City since they're not coming here. And so that was an interesting way of negotiating and partnering with Baltimore City and it's been very successful for us even through leadership changes. Miami Dade is, uh, as you know, an unbelievable uh, winner within your network and it's, it's one that has really um, made incredible strides in how they think about development in it and yet they also want to make sure we're not losing students that are coming even with stronger persistence rates than most community colleges, they realize that they would love to see a greater link between their young adults engaged in the corporate sector in Miami so that Miami's talent doesn't leave Miami, particularly bilingual talent, and go to other places, which they have seen and documented. And they're also very clear, if we get young adults past 20 college credits, they're three times as likely to graduate from college, and what a difference that makes for them and it makes a difference for Europe as well. With NOVA, um, with the head, Bob Templin, at the head of um, the helm there, an incredible education leader, another star within your network, was one of the first partners that linked with us in our traditional core model and has been incredible in supporting our young adults like Felicia and others who are going to be graduating from the Europe program with credits and, and particularly looking at co-matriculation and other ways of, of um, supporting the young adults that are in the standalone model. We are working with NOVA and thinking about how do we look at both a professional training core model as well within parts of the network where maybe we do not have the traditional core model at. 
So when we think about those, these are all examples of incredible partners. Um, Philadelphia, we are currently speaking with two colleges right now to see who we ultimately will partner with. And, um, and it's, it's, it's according both ways, as I, I always think about it, it's the way it should be. And, um, and we'll be able to say who that partner is within the next few weeks. Let's go to our next slide. So, so what does this look like? when it's on a community college campus. What does the professional training core mean or look like? Well, I wish I could see all of your faces because I love to speak with my hands. But what I'll do is I'll, I'm counting on the visuals to help move us through. The first is that any class that we have, we start with a class orientation. And for many of the colleges that are on this call, you have orientations as well. And we, what we do is we piggyback or complement that with a subset of students that are in the year up program. And that's important for them to know because any young adult that is recruited into the year up program is doing more than their traditional college load. And so what do I mean by that? That means within their first six months, they are full time college students. The majority of them are earning financial aid or on financial aid, excuse me, and that they also agree to come together at least between seven and 10 hours a week outside of that where they will be earning a stipend of around $50 a week, but then also learning everything from attitude behavior communication, professional skills, and learning how to receive and give feedback, as well as meeting someone from the professional sector every Friday for a Friday speaker. So they're also required to come to school professionally dressed. So already you see the stakes, this contract still exists and the stakes are high and you're like, wow, even while they are current students. The second six months after they've earned their first 12 to 15 college credits, which is about the average of the credits that any of our young adults are earning in the professional training course, they go on an internship for six months. That internship earns up to eight college credits where they will take an additional class outside of your time just to meet their year up of, excuse me, their community college requirements so they can also be considered a full-time student their second six months, of which their 30 hours of those six months are spent at a corporate partner site. So in Miami, we have five at American Airlines, we have a few at Bank of America, I mean, you name it. We're a couple at AT&T, great partners that we're really proud to have. And after those six months, what they do is they graduate from the Europe program. But what's key is that they don't graduate from community college. And we see this as Europe as providing support or a kickoff for what the second year is. The second year they are Europe alums who will come together as alums, but it is focused on college completion. They can be mentors to our other students. Many of them, if they do accept um, offers of employment will probably do it, for example, in Miami part-time, Baltimore may be doing it full-time, their employer, so they can continue working. And what we do is create a level and sense of community so that they can persist. We see ourselves as the molasses in the first year, not to slow a young person down, right, but to keep them on track to graduation because we are making it real-time relevant to them to what are going to be opportunities post-graduation from community college. But most importantly, we're also making sure that it's not separate from, separate from the academic mission and persistence. We see ourselves as complementing each other. Now, every six months, there is a new year of class starting. We recruit classes in September. We recruit them in January and February. That's critical for us. We always do that. There is always, in the corporate or private sector, a year up intern representative, and we love that. We need that visibility. We have realized that that has been our greatest strength. Now, when we think about process, as we said, I'm just restating it, the orientation, the training. When I talk about training, it's the education in the first six months of community college, the internship the second six months. Then we have our graduation, which is a milestone, which is when they're entering their second year of community college, and then they're an active alum on campus completing their second year. Let's keep going to the next slide. Let's think about the internship. This is really important as we go forward when we want to think about it, 
is that I just wanted to show you A and E slides because hey, this is what our young people look like and this is where they're at. And so one of my favorite visits to internships is when they show me they have their name on their cubicle. If you could just see Raquel Reeves, I mean just the pride that she has right there, it just blows me away. I love it. I love our other young adult who was in the top left of the presentation with PowerPoint that he had put out together, who supported the team, and is actually going through the skills of doing the presentation and um, two, of, two of my favorite photos. Let's keep going. So what does it mean to be a college um, that is partnering in the professional training course? Well, the first thing is in um, its space. So what does this mean? It means office space for staff, typically for about four staff. Europe has always been a, a communal or when I say communal, meaning we're very used to working in small space, shared space. This isn't about private space. <laughs> so um, you would laugh if you saw, saw my startup offices for years. We're quite the bullpen oriented group. Um, I'd say the second thing is that we look for space in a classroom space. And what we've seen is we have seen uh, registrars and others really put aside classroom space for us so that our young adults come in for their professional training skills, the feedback skills, building, and also hosting our speakers. We also look for um, IT and communications. It's been very important for us to be part of the network within that community college, the IT infrastructure, and so far we haven't had any problem doing that. We look for support from admissions, and that is very important for us, both Baltimore and Miami, and as we're talking with our different college options in Philadelphia, what they do is we, we agree on where it's going to be the pool of young people that we are going to, to get. In some cases, we bring young people who apply to the college, and, and we decide as a group, okay, if we're going to have a Europe program, we want to make sure that developmentally they're at this level or that level. And what we've seen is that we've definitely taken risks at both campuses, but it's been highly successful for us. Um, and that has been great because I'd say for most colleges, it's just not exactly where they anticipated when we take risk notes. It's very helpful. Academics, how do we think about scheduling? That's important to have that up front. Young adults need to know what their schedule will look like and what they're applying for, because they do apply to be part of the year program and are interviewed in the process. And then we always look for co-branding opportunities. Um, we look at our graduations as co-branding opportunities when we bring in corporate partners. We bring them to the campus as critical co-branding opportunities. Most recently, we had the president of um, Miami-Dade, Dr. Padron, host a breakfast for uh, quite a few of the corporate partners that we work with in Miami, and that was an incredible co-branding opportunity. So those are critical pieces. Um, now let me go into why the partnership works. If we can just, uh, before we go to NOVA, so stay right there, thank you, is that um, Europe at the end of the day is about a connection to workforce in this model, and it is also about complementing the completion goals of community colleges. We know that even one semester makes a difference in the lifetime learning of a young adult, and we've seen that. All of you there know the same data that's there. We also know that 80% of the young adults who go to school work also. Instead of having work being ancillary, how do we make it central to how they embed themselves in their first year? Because we know within the first semester we have created or a level of engagement or created a level of disengagement for persistence. And we want to be part of that link to make the engagement. We also know what works is a joint commitment to the young adults that we serve. As we said, they're community college students first, and our goals are very much aligned. And then the last is that the partnership works because it's about integration. At the end of the day, um, this will only work if there's enormous communication between both. I just received an email, and if I could have put it on the deck, I would have put it on the deck, from the president of um, one of the campuses in Miami Bay. And he just talked about, you know, how exciting it was for him to meet new students that are coming to his campus, talking about how Europe was an attraction to them as part of their applying, which was, for me, the win-win, and for him, the win-win. And so how exciting is that? So 
I just wanted to put that out there. I know Bill's going to uh, be speaking in a minute. Uh, I don't want to take too much out of there. It's more important to hear from one of our co-stakeholders in this. Um, but I wanted to just share that with you. And I thank everyone for your patience. And if I went too fast, I'm sorry about that. All right, Bill, I get to transition it to you now. Thanks very much. Um, can you hear me OK? Yes, we can. Thank you. We certainly Thanks. can. Great. OK. Um, well, thank you um, for inviting um, NOVA to be part of the conversation. Um, we're real pleased because um, we've had a great relationship with Europe, and um, we um, we absolutely believe in, in we call it at NOVA, co-enrollment partnerships. And um, Europe is one of six um, partners that we have. Um, all of them are based in the community, and all of them um, uh, have a mission to do training, and um, NOVA has partnered um, with uh, a variety, uh, six, we're actually we're kind of in seven now um, partnerships, and uh, we serve about a thousand students annually, so our year off partnership is about 25 percent of that number, and then we have our additional partners. Um, Partnering with Year Up is easy for us because it's absolutely consistent with our college goals. And we, we summarize those in, in the three words, access, success, and excellence. And it's particularly in the area of access that Year Up is so, so helpful to us. Uh, uh, NOVA believes in um, really finding every way that we can to enable individuals who are um, low income, who are in their first generation, uh, in their family going to college, who may not have been born in the United States, who uh, may be underemployed um, and or unemployed. Um, we believe in, in seeking to offer access. Um, uh, in, in most cases, these are some of our more hard to serve students, um, but we're really committed to them. And so partnering with Europe is, is really easy for us because um, of our shared values. The second uh, thing, or the third bullet, um, is that um, Europe, you know, the students are earning credit while they're at NOVA, so that's co-enrollment. They, they're earning um, about 28 community college credits, uh, but, but they also become a pipeline of students to continue in um, in study at NOVA toward an associate degree or additional certification. Uh, we, we believe with Europe that, that getting a job is, is a critical, um, is just a critical matter. Um, but we want students, once they're secure in, in a good job, that they can live on the wage, that they will continue their education. So our Europe students are a pipeline for continued study at NOVA. And, and, and being a pipeline, we, we know that they're really well prepared. Uh, we know that they have uh, have acquired the self-discipline, they've acquired confidence, they've developed good study skills, they've been held accountable, um, they, they've learned how to give and receive feedback. Um, they're on time, they're prepared, and so we know that, um, that they're going to be great students as they continue um, at NOVA. And, um, we know that, that participants in all of our, our co-enrollment partnerships have higher uh, program completion rates, certificate completion rates than our general college population. And so we expect that when Europe students um, come on to NOVA, that they're also going to have higher graduation rates with associate degrees uh, just because of the preparation that they've received and the, the, the real readiness um, for college. And then the last piece that, that is a value, and you know, it's it, it's certainly not the first piece, but it's not um, it's not unimportant, and and that is that um, Nova doesn't doesn't lose any money on this deal. You know, Nova is a community college, and we have to function with a business model just like like any other, and we're not in the business of um, you know we're not funded by foundations so that we can simply pass along. Um, assistance, uh, we, we can't give anything away. And so um, it's really important that our, our partnership with Europe and all of our co-enrollment partnerships, um, they, they break even uh, for us. And even after, we, we call the model revenue sharing, and, and by that arrangement, 
um, we, we return to Europe 85 percent of the tuition that uh, students pay for their, their classes at, at Europe. And you know, probably a lot of your community colleges are the same. Your, your state doesn't allow you to award a credit unless that credit has been paid for. So all of the community college credits are paid for and we return 80 percent of that, that um, tuition fee to Europe. And so even when we do that, we're still not losing any money because in, in the state of Virginia, uh, a lot there's a state um, apportionment as well as the tuition dollars in the state. Um, the state distribution is based on full-time equivalent students, and and we have a lot of those through the Europe program, and so that's that's where um, the community college is able to break even when the um, distribution from the state is yeah, follows upon uh, upon the instruction and it's built upon the numbers of students who have been in the program. Okay, next slide, please. So our present program, uh, present partnership with Europe, uh, follows the original model. It's based in an urban business community. Um, Arlington, Virginia is a, a, a really vibrant uh, business community. Uh, the site in is right on um, the DC Metro so and, and actually we have more students come to the program from DC actually than come from Virginia so having that metro access is is really important um, for the program and the students are in a, an office building an office complex it's just the environment of working in a business working in a corporation that um, that the program is, is training them for so that's our, our current program, um, which we're delighted with. Um, we serve 120 students in the training portion at a time, while the other another 120 are in internships. And um, the program is is looking, and, and and you all can comment on the timetable better than I, um, to to um, up the size to full capacity, which would be 160 students. Uh, we, you know, the reputation has spread in the NOVA community and um, both our president, President Templin, and the provost of one of our other campuses are interested in the Baltimore-Miami-Dade model. Um, they're interested in, in, in bringing a, a year of program onto one of our campuses. It's very different from um, the Arlington location. Uh, Woodbridge is in a different county. It's uh, much more distressed economically. Um, it's really kind of the outskirts, and so they're interested in the model of, of bringing the program onto the campus, and they see the particular value of that as as being kind of a leavening or or the the influence of the the year up students with their discipline and and um, responsibility uh, that that rubbing off on on the whole student population. So they see this possibility as perhaps. Uh, impacting everything that gets done in their campus. That's it for me. Thanks, Thanks so much, Bill. Um, uh, we really appreciate your feedback. Um, so before we go to questions, uh, again, I'm really excited to have Talisha Rogers here in the Achieving the Dream office with us. And so I'm going to turn it over to Talisha. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am Talisha Rogers. I'm from Washington, D.C., and I previously completed my uh, learning and development phase at Europe. Prior to Europe, I was employed as a teacher at a child development center, and I graduated from high school in 2008. So I didn't go straight to college after high school because, honestly, I had no plans of furthering my education. But um, now that I have joined Europe, I feel as though it was one of the, br the brilliant choices that I could have made in my life. Um, not only have I developed skills in technology, technology and business skills, I mean, mm, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> not only have I developed skills in technology, but also as a young professional. The intense training that Europe has provided me with, such as IT, business communication, and professional skills, has tremendously impacted my journey as a young working adult. I have even considered to further my, to further my education beyond Europe, 
after being in a different learning environment. I am not exactly sure what I want to study at, but I do know I wanted to be I wanted to involve technology. My learn my long term goals are to further my education and find a career so that I will be able to live comfortably and to provide for my son. I want to thank my learning community at Year Up, my supervisor Lorenzo and the whole ATD staff for providing me with this opportunity and all I want to say thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. Um, I can't say how uh, how excited we've been to have Europe interns here at Achieving the Dream. And um, you can see uh, the picture right now that's up on the slide is uh, the, the picture of Felicia's Year Up Learning and Development class. Um, so we're, we're really ha happy to have her here. With that, I want to turn it um, over to, to you all to ask if you have any questions for any of our presenters. Um, for our representative from Europe, um, Nova or Talisha, who we have here in the office. Um, as a reminder, there are two ways that you can ask questions. You can raise your hand, um, and that will bring you to um, uh, that will bring your the, my attention to you, and I can unmute you so you can ask it, or uh, you can type your question into the question pane as well. A few, few minutes for people to, to think about it. Um, while we're waiting for some questions, I thought I'd just ask um, Hee-Yoon and, um, and Lisa to comment a little bit about uh, how, how, I know they talked about how they look um, for cities where there's a need, but kind of what, what what goes into the logistical and planning for creating a program on a community college campus? I was wondering if you could weigh in on that, Hee-Yoon and Lisa. Thanks, Sarah. This is Hee-Yoon. Um, just so that everyone knows, Lizette um, is stepping out, stepped out of a board meeting to um, to do the webinar. And she's just stepped back, so um, we're tag teaming, and I've taken on the I'm taking on the Q and A part of the of the session. Um, but but Sarah, that's a really great question. And some of the logistics that go into launching a new site um, in the new market that we enter um, is, is, well, let me just, we, we, we are the, Lizette and I are the um, primary relationship builders as we enter a market. So we do all the research into what corporate partners are present, um, what kind of connections we have to those corporate partners. We like to have those conversations as early as possible. We um, do a whole scan of the of the market to see what community colleges and education potential education partners are in the area. Um, and we, if we have not already been approached by an interested party, um, we'll then start to make connections and try to have conversations with leadership at those schools also as early as possible. Um, and then we also reach out to the community. We do a lot of research. Who are the um, community-based community -based organizations that we should be reaching out to? What is the pipeline um, of the K-12 system? And where are, are the graduates of high school or the, the GED programs going? Um, we want to talk to all those organizations serving those, um, those young adults. Um, we, we hire the entire staff, um, and usually a startup staff that serves 20 to 40 students at launch will be about four staff, four full-time staff members, including um, a site director or executive director, an admissions and outreach manager, a corporate partner manager, and a um, kind of college liaison um, person that's a little too, and a, and a college liaison, liaison slash program manager, and that's the person who has um, primary responsibility of day-to-day -day interaction with our young adults, even though all of our staff members have a lot of daily interaction with our young adults on campus. Um, and so that's just a little kind of nutshell, in a nutshell, what we what we do to launch a program um, on a campus, Sarah. Great, thanks so much. And um, it looks like I have a, um, a a question from Donna Stanley. So Donna, I'm going to go ahead. It says you can't be unmuted because you haven't entered your PIN. Um, so I'm sending you your audio PIN, which hopefully you can enter. Um, and talk, or you could also um, go ahead and uh, type in your question. Um, just see whether I have any other questions here. See, Donna, if you can go ahead and enter that pin in, and then I'll be able to uh, answer your question. Oh, I think she, she uh, 
typed it in. Um, is there written material available that can be used for rural models? It's a great que uh, question. So um, I know uh, you and you've talked a lot about kind of your urban um, endeavors. Um, has Europe been launched anywhere in a more rural setting, or um, are there thoughts um, from Europe about that? Also, another really great great question. And the reason why we're so excited about this professional training core model is because um, our hypothesis at the moment, especially while we're in pilot phase, is that um, this model is is what is going to bring Europe into more rural areas. Um, right now, in our current core model, we've been somewhat restricted to more urban areas just because of the the portion of our operations that needs to be funded by philanthropic um, funding. Um, what we're hoping is that, you know, with the partnership with the community colleges um, and also with an alternative internship model that we're looking into um, is that we can be brought into more rural areas. And some of the things, you know, by alternative internship model that I'm talking about is, um, is you know, we know that what kind of systems are in existence anywhere, you know, whether it's urban or rural. And, you know, one of the ideas that we're, we're researching very heavily is the healthcare industry. You know, there are hospitals everywhere, and the growing need for, for hospitals and healthcare and the technology field within the healthcare system is also really huge. Um, and so we are really, um, we're, we have a whole team, and, and we've actually engaged a third-party consultant to do some work with us on our internship strategy and the research that's going to go into it, but we're really excited because um, we see huge potential to go there. So no, we're not there yet, but we, um, we're very excited about the PTC model because we think that that's going to bring us into rural areas, and um, we don't have any written materials on that, certainly, but, um, but we're hoping that that's soon in, in the pipeline within the next year or two. Great, thank you, Yoon. And, and I assume there's probably lots of materials on your website um, that just generally about the model, correct? Um, you know, actually our, our professional training core million person model um, presence on our website is a little bit small just because we're in pilot phase, but I'm more than happy to share with anybody um, any of the materials that we have ready um, if they contact me via email afterwards, and I'm sure, Sarah, that you'll provide that, right? Yes, for sure, and um, of course, I can always, um, it, it, every, almost everybody has my email, so you're also very welcome <laughs> to reach out to me, and I, I know how to get a hold of Kiyun, but we will definitely um, provide her contact information as well. I'm just going to give a last call for questions here before we do our evaluation poll. It seems as if... Um, Everyone's awed by, by the great model. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm sure that there will be many more questions as, as people um, think about this model and think about how they see it, um, you know, potentially serving students uh, on their community college. So uh, again, we'll send out that contact information and um, be sure that any uh, follow-up questions that, that people might have get answered. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and run our evaluation poll. Okay, so if everyone could go ahead and um, select the appropriate um, evaluation questions, that would be great. We have about 59% I voted 7682. Great. About 94. We're going to go ahead and close the poll. Great. And so you'll see the results. Um, it seems uh, that, that this call was definitely useful to everyone. Um, and I'm, I'm very glad to hear that. Um, I, again, we struggle with not having enough time for questions, which we'll continually try to work on um, and to, to make sure that, that there's uh, definitely time for questions, perhaps uh, interspersed throughout the presentation uh, might address this. Um, but we really appreciate you all for, um, for being on the call today, and we're so grateful to our presenters, um, all of them who uh, put in great time for those, these presentations and really uh, have gotten us thinking about a lot. Um, Carol, are you still there? I am here. 
Carol, do so, you want to tell us a little? Yeah, I'll do the wrap up and tell us what's coming up for the next month. Um, so we've changed the dates for the Leader College webinar to May 9th. It's still a Thursday. We had to move around another meeting that's happening. And on that May 9th call and webinar, we're going to be featuring Daniel Maxey, who was with the Delphi Project on the Changing Faculty and Student Success. This uh, project is really aimed at trying to better understand the experience of non-tenure track faculty in higher ed and how all of us can be doing um, a better job of supporting those non-tenure track faculty, including uh, making sure that they're deeply engaged in the student success and completion agenda. I think all of you know that we've been putting a lot of effort on trying to deepen the uh, experience with faculty, making sure that we're really getting across to a broad spectrum of faculty in this student success work. Uh, we've been doing a, a deep dive on this for a couple of years now, so this is one more in a series of conversations about how to get the faculty um, working on this agenda in a collaborative and productive way. So with that, we'll just say thank you very much for being part of today. This has been recorded. It will be posted soon for uh, sharing with anybody that you'd like to or for just reviewing again what you've heard today on the presentation. Thank you so much, everyone, for being part of this call and this webinar, and I hope you have a very good day.